This is a CBC Podcast. Freeze. No, we're not talking about the air temperature right now. That is the word from Ottawa to anyone in any group that is supporting so-called freedom convoys with cash. The Emergencies Act gives the federal government broad power to freeze financial transactions and to track where that money is coming from. Dan Legier is a lawyer in Fredericton. He's been looking at the implications of the new regulations, and he says it's important to know who is funding protests. Good morning. Hey, good morning. So why do you think it's important to track where protest movements are are getting their funding? Well, I think it's important from the perspective that uh, this is how we govern ourselves in general, right? I mean, political movements and political parties and 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 everything in this in this country are are designed to to know who is giving to whom how much. We put limits on things. And in this case, um, what we have is a huge international component, right? So not even just, you know, which Canadians are donating what to whom, but uh, what international forces are at play, what are their motives. Knowing where the money's coming from is a pretty fundamental and important thing. So how exactly does the Emergencies Act address uh, those questions? Well, it's a, not to get too in the weeds, but they're, you know, like when we go to the, when we deal with our banks, typically you and I, we go in with large sums of cash. There's, they can trigger, uh, they can trigger reviews by, uh, by a regulatory agency called FinTrack. Um, FinTrack's not able to, uh, to take or, and is not receiving those types of reports and information from crowdsource funding. So these uh, internet based, uh, crowdsourcing uh, platforms that collect money and then disperse it they don't report to them track so one of what the what the regulations do now is they require require the reporting of these of these entities and and now presumably a review of of large amounts of money moving through through these uh, crowdsourcing uh, platforms but what powers does the act give ottawa when it comes to freezing the, those transactions well, like anything else, I mean, it, it, right now what we have are, are orders in, uh, in in Ottawa and Windsor and whatnot that there's that there's illegal activities going on, uh, and so if the fund if if you're donating to uh, to you know to facilitate an illegal activity, it'll be frozen, because um, presumably your your motivation um, is not lawful as well. The, the individual doing the protesting is not complying with the law, and you trying to aid them in breaking the law is not lawful either. So freeze funds, investigate, have potential, there could be potential consequences that, uh, you know, depending on on what your intents were in donating the money to begin with. But can it seize a private bank account? Well, I, whether they could be seized or not, I mean, it, it, I think we'll have to do, with, you know, to uh, to deal with an actual charge or fine to be to be levied. At, at certainly right now, it looks that, the, that there's broad powers to... To, to freeze. And, and you mentioned FinTrack. Mm-hmm. For those not familiar, can you talk a little bit more uh, about how that works? Yeah, I mean, try to, you know, if I had a large uh, amount of money in my, my mattress today and I went to the bank, um, the bank is, re- all Canadian banks are required by, by this entity, FinTrack, which reports the Ministry of Finance, to report suspicious deposits, movements of money. So, um, and it's all to do with money laundering and anti-terrorism legislation that exists. So Canadians, every day when they do things unusual with their banking, can can flag an investigation by FinTrack, and ultimately, if they're involved in nefarious acts, can can lead to investigations and and whatnot that way. So it's it's something that's already in place. But what it's not, what up until now it's not been able to do, is to deal with these internet-based uh, crowdsourcing. So. This is a temporary um, temporary movement to, to, to fix that, and I think long-term we'll see amendments to the legislation to add it, to give them the same status as banks. Hmm. So you mentioned that there could be consequences, but what, what penalties can FinTrack or Ottawa impose if, if they find that these groups are, are supporting protesters? Well, if you're if you're aiding in, in someone breaking the law, then you know there's a, there's a multitude of charges that could be uh, could be laid, uh, you know, and that's the and that's the that's the real issue, right? I mean, it's it's national, it's international, um, you know, our ability to you know to uh, to deal with you know you know someone in the United States or in the Ukraine on this is, is probably not not very effective, other than freezing the ability for the money to come in, but dealing with Canadians, you know, maybe in New Brunswick who are 
who were breaching, uh, you know, the injunction order in on, in Ontario. It's uh, you know, at, at, as a starting point, you cut the money off, and then if there are if there are criminal code violations or whatnot, presumably the police will uh, investigate and, and deal with that. But I I think what this really does, because I, I don't imagine that most Canadians when they're when they're donating are thinking that I might be donating, to, you know, I'm donating to a movement that I that I'm supporting. I'm not donating for people to break the law. So there's not the intent there, right? Mm-hmm. But what this does is cause people to to take pause because you, we don't know who you're sending the money to. We don't know what the leadership is, who they are, how they divvy the money out, and and I think that this is what this is doing is raising these important issues so that when people are sending money, you know, maybe at a reflex that they you know take some time to consider that there might be some serious implications of it if it goes to the wrong person to do the wrong things. So a lot of attention right now because of the protests, but but. What's your sense, um, Dan, of, of of how long this kind of thing has been going on, perhaps under the radar? I don't think I think it's always gone gone on in the sense. I mean, we all we see we see it with community movements and and whatnot, and they're all good intention, but um, we just never seen this level of of money flow, right? And uh, and so when you see in the course of a few weeks, you know, millions and millions of dollars move. Um, that's that's really what grabs everybody's attention, and I think that, uh, and I think there are some you know policy implications that are going to need to be well thought out. Um, not you know I don't think anybody's interested in in you know preventing someone from you know making a donation to help somebody whose house burnt down or something. But when when it comes to you know potentially you know raising you know millions of dollars to subvert, subvert political you know systems and whatnot, we have to figure out how this works and how we can deal with it in a rational way. Mm. So what impact do you think this could have on, on, on protests in, in, in the short term? Well, I think uh, if left left unchecked, it could uh, it could almost create a, a protest industry, I would think. Um, but I, I think, uh, you know, I, I, I suspect now that the, the light has been shone on it, that there's going to, you know, it'll it'll tamper it down, actually. Hmm. But any changes uh, that, that you think uh, could be could be made uh, in, in the long term once once we're kind of through this um part of our history i do well i think that there's a my my view is actually getting outside of the fin track and 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 these sorts of things is an actual real substantive debate and of what our electoral funding laws look like and we allow for third parties to participate in in uh, in the public sphere uh under some scrutiny but it's not it's not something that we've put a lot of a uh, lot of uh, thought into it's relatively new in canada so we need to we need to understand how non-political actors are going to uh, are going to exist how they're going to be funded and i think there's going to need to be more attention to that so i think long term that's where it is because you know as as a single canadian i'm limited to how much i can contribute to a political party but seemingly right now i'm unlimited as to what I can contribute to a protest movement. And that's a, that's going to be a societal debate that needs to be dealt with. Okay. Appreciate your time this morning. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, thank you. Bye. Dan Legere is a lawyer with Pink Larkin in Fredericton, and he's been examining regulations in the federal government's new Emergencies Act. For more CBC Podcasts, go to cbc.ca slash podcasts.